Hey everybody, it is Tuesday morning, so this will be our day 16 of our quarantine gaming sessions, and this will be level 6 of the Under Mountain. Um, so today's game session, the party made their way down to the next lowest uh, level of the dungeon, um, and lo and behold, they take the teleporter, um, it teleports them to this very large square chamber, um, as soon as they teleport in, they hear this like yipping sound, and they see two gnolls pull a lever, and of course these open up, and a bunch of hyenas start coming out. So this quest, right off the get-go, um, they're under attack, obviously, as you can probably tell. Um, what they did not know was that this level um, has been slowly overran by a pack of hyenas, and... Uh, mostly gnolls and a couple flines. Of course, we got the, the leader flying there, and there's a cleric. And then there, there's a step here that goes up to like a little uh, another chamber where the main part of their tribe or uh, pack, if you will, has been living. And they were trying to expand into this area. Uh, they sent a couple scouts out, and of course, they know there's a fresh water source with underwater crabs that keep boiling up. Um, of course, they do know there's some other dangerous. Um, through these doors, there are some stone giants that have made their lair in here. Of course, they love the caverns. They have some type of weird glowing stone over that way. And of course, they have fresh water and fresh food. And of course, they have a pet of uh, displacer beasts. There's the mama and the baby displacer beast. If I can get him to focus. Now, let's see if I can scoot him back a little bit. There we go. That's where I printed those two up the other day. <clears throat> Pardon me. So yeah, um, if they do make their way down this way, uh, they notice there's about six or seven different levers along the wall. Um, a couple of them looks like were uh, traps that have been long disabled. Uh, of course, this one opened up these two antechambers where they store their hyenas. And of course, uh, the one of them kind of turns on, or should say makes the one light in this room brighter. Or dimmer so it's kind of like a light switch um, in this case it's just like a continual flame where it shutters part of it of course the leader of this little uh, scouting party the flying makes his lair in there and of course the cleric is over here preaching to theirs um, as soon as they get within melee of those those two of course the help of actually showed you as soon as they get within melee of these two they start yipping and of course the whole tribe will slowly start making their way down to this chamber. Um, as far as they know, it's probably just the stone giants being rowdy again, so they're not uh, completely unused to there being some violence down there. Now this is going to be kind of the interesting part. Um, the stone giants normally would not want to interact with the adventuring party. Um, they do have, of course, their displacer beasts, which they use kind of as guardians. They set up these two little chair or layers there, I should say. And this just symbolizes when they walk in, I'm going to let the party know that there are a set of steps to get down. There's a, some rubble that seems to be blocking part of it. And it looks like this is where one section of the dungeon where it starts to turn into a cavern. And you can tell where someone's been slowly working on it. But it looks like they've actually been digging away a part of the dungeon and trying to make more caverns. Which was one of the other stone giants, because they like the natural cavern look. Um, at one time, there was two other stone giants, um, the one that used to keep guard over the magical portal. Uh, when the gnolls first came in, they attacked him, they overran him, and uh, sadly he died, which that was actually the priestess's husband. And this chamber here just kind of leads to like a little underwater grotto, which the giants are not small enough to fit into. Um, so they are able to communicate with the stone giants, if any of them speak giant, or if they use like a linguistic skill. So there could be a little bit of diplomacy there. Um, of course, the one thing these giants also hate are certain types of dragons. So if they are willing to let them know where one of those particular beast layers up above, these giants may be willing to take that layer in its place and of course would welcome a chance to uh, have the party help them dispose of the, the giant, or I should say the dragon, sorry. Of course, we got the stairs going down there, which can lead down. Um, this glowing large crystal um, is also another magical uh, gateway, which will take them to a different part of a dungeon level, if they do wish to use that. 
And of course this will, if they recognize of course the crabs, there could be an underwater chamber if they do wish to use the water breathing items and trying to discover how to those tunnels connect. So overall, like I said, I think there'll be basically five um, encounters here. Most of a little bit more combat oriented. Um, of course, you have the, the main combat here. And then, of course, you're going to have the secondary combat, which, depending on how long it takes them, um, they could grab, grab a lot of the aggro from those creatures and drag them into one of the rooms and then, you know, fight from the doorways if they wish. Um, the Displacer Beasts, they're not um, the most savage since they are partially docile. So they're not going to have the best morale. Um, the Stone Giants, they do have the opportunity to fight them or to try to negotiate with them. So it should be kind of interesting to see how the party uh, uses that to their advantage. And then hopefully um, tomorrow I'll be able to update you all on what kind of choices they made and uh, what happened. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for watching. Um, I'll be coming out with another video course for the next probably about 14 days or so. Um, like I said, we're planning on being quarantined for at least 30 days. So I'm going to try to do at least 30 uh, game sessions. Maybe a little longer, maybe a little less. Just kind of depends. And just as a reminder, we are getting pretty close to 10,000 subscribers. So I'm probably going to resin print up maybe some more of the little corpse tokens. Um, or something so we can do maybe a couple giveaways um, once we hit 10,000 subscribers. But I'll make another video once we do hit that 10,000 mark, and we'll put up a poll. We'll see what everyone wants to, what everyone would like to uh, to see as a reward. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you're all staying healthy, you're all staying safe, and you're all having as much fun as you can. If you're like me and you're quarantined, and Lord knows it's hard. All right, everybody. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye bye.